Hi, my name's Rob Birdwell, and I'm here to talk about the Jam Man Classic Looper Tool and the Classic Looper Manager that I've written for it. Uh, you can get it here, you can download it here, and you'll want to unzip that. And typically, what you'll do is you'll have your own directory where you may want to create um, your own files or whatever but dump them in here you want to create your own batch file though that's what some people forget is that you need to start this thing via some sort of shell script and I'll show you how to do that if we launch that that'll run the tool right there you can donate that's always appreciated and uh, I'm a musician and I wrote this in my spare time so any if you find it useful great all right so we're in the tool. By default, there will be no library loaded because you haven't created anything and no Jam Man connection. So let's create a library. And a library is where this tool is just going to uh, store the WAV files. So let's call it my library. And it's you can put your name, whatever. But this tick is very important because since the Jam Man is uh, the classic non-stereo version only works with wave 44.1 mono files you want to keep that ticked that'll ensure that they get converted great so I've got a library but I don't have any files in it so clicking the plus I can go to any directory where I keep my wave files and I can select some and I'll just select a few here It'll confirm to import them, and I do. Next, I want to connect to a Jamman device. So a Jamman device is basically any folder. In this case, I'm connected to this H drive, which might be my Jamman via USB, and I, it is actually, and I'll connect to that. Uh, I'll try to check, or the software is going to try to check if it's managed by any other tools like Looper tools, the legacy software, I can read that XML file, software can, and there's nothing on this card. So what I'm going to do is just give it a quick name. My jam man. And this is the device, right? Let's just call it my jam man card. Okay, so I'm connected to a device and there's empty slots. So what we want to do probably is put a put a slot there and I do that by dragging uh, by default sometimes this box will be ticked and it, when you try to copy you get a confirmation if you don't like that or want to get rid of it just take it off now this is also an important tick I'm gonna actually tick that because uh, that's why I'm redoing this demo because <laughs> I messed up before uh, detect and import change slots that's going to be important if I can get this right so over here I can I'm not actually writing to the device yet so I can quickly either delete them all I can select them all at once and drag them to a place and let's just say I'm gonna put these starting maybe at five so I'm gonna leave the first four slots empty and I'm gonna leave the rest empty so I've got got them in 5 through 11 now this is the important part if I'm ready to go on the road I need to finalize this device and save everything so I'm gonna click the save button there and I'm gonna say yes now it's doing the work of clearing your card first of all and then it's writing all the files to the appropriate slots and as you can see it's done now this is also important. Since we're done, I should really uh, go on the road and take my card. So disconnect, say yes. Now my card is disconnected. And let's just minimize this for now. And let's take a look at, um, at the Jamman card real quick and see what we got. So if we look at the Jamman, we see there are no loop one, two, three, four, or whatever. That's all the Jam Man needs to know. Um, 
there's the setup file, which is the intrinsic file for the Digitech device that just tells it which, which slot. And it, before finalizing, if you wanted it to start on, say, slot 1 or 12 or whatever, you could do that. And this JMC Sync XML is the Looper Tools Sync file, and it's not used by the device at all, but it's used when you connect back. So you can look at the XML if you want. It looks similar to the Looper Tools, and it's got a little more stuff in it um, that I found useful. So anyway, let me take my card out onto the field, and into the road, onto the road, and uh, I'm just going to record a new loop onto um, slot number one. So there's my loop, and I will save that, and let's just say for fun that I'm done from my road trip, and I'm back in my studio, and I'll go to my, put my card back in, I connected my Jam Man device, and I'm back from the road. So let's connect to the device. And great. So you see here that there's something different. I recorded something on loop number one, and it's saying new loop as of this date, and a little description in here. So it's, it's really just detecting change. So it's obvious that either something got orphaned. Now I know just by playing it. Oh, listen to that beautiful loop. So I'll just call this. Rob's horrid demo. Jam. Press enter, and I can delete this information there. Press enter, and I've got that for all time. Now, as you can see, uh, it's synced with that there on the card. So we're pretty much good to go there. And one thing I would recommend is that you probably uh, disconnect your card now. It's technically it's out of sync right now, but that's okay. Uh, we'll resync when we go on the road again. But this this nice little demo jam, I should really archive this, so I can copy that to an archive directory here. And um, in case I decide, hey, that horrid little thing wasn't really so horrid, now it's it's archived. So if I removed it, I could always get it back from the archive. It doesn't have to be in my library. Uh, in fact, that might be a good way to manage your things. Anyway, that's my brief, hopefully useful demo. Uh, thank you very much, and hope you get some use out of this product. Bye-bye.